let's see what you're talking about. Give me a little of everything says, I don't want to be a nay naysayer, but I'm kind of losing this fight. I'm not fighting anymore. It's on automatic. I've been there. What you're going through is called strategic hopelessness. And it was one of my favorite tools to keep my addiction alive. Strategic hopelessness, here in my words was, I'm an alcoholic. I drink, that's what I do. I'm gonna die an alcoholic. And that was my strategic hopelessness. And give me a little of everything. I recognized it in you when you changed your name to give me a little of everything. Immediately recognized that your, you, you gotta know, your addiction is as smart as you are and you sound like a smart individual. So it's gonna be a fight. But right now it's telling you give up, there's no use. You might as well drink till you're dead. And you know what? That's the easy way out. I can relate to you. I can relate to your strategic hopelessness, your insistence upon solving things with logic, intellect, rebellion, and that's why we can help each other. But I believe in you, and uh, there are a couple new sober people here. New is a relative term when talking about sobriety. I consider myself new. When I get five years, January 18th of 2021, I will say, look, I'm an old timer, perhaps. Mike Tucker says, people are dying from alcohol younger and younger for different reasons. Some people don't see a future for themselves because of lack of opportunities. The media is calling them deaths of despair. My own dad used to say that, he said, I used to not seem to see a future for myself. I never planned ahead. I never saved money. I never went to college or planned for a future. And in hindsight, in relation to what you're saying, Mike, I didn't see a future for myself. I didn't, I subconsciously just knew that I was gonna live a short life drinking. And that was the strategic hopelessness that we were talking about earlier. Alcohol proved such a menace, such a formidable foe that I gave up. I was just like, look, I'm an alcoholic. I'm gonna drink and probably die, sorry. But then I started getting locked up and I'm like, well, prison isn't something that I want to uh, experience or death, really, or alcoholic uh, jaundice, dementia, all of the horrible hell on earth things that come with the third stage of alcoholism. I said, you know what? I'm not down with any of that and I'm getting pretty close. So uh, I think I, I got to do whatever it takes to sober up. Give me a little of everything. I have given up. This is book that I'm going to try again. Give me that was a that was an analogy when I said I take medication. I, I was saying we're addicts. We want to be able to get sober by taking a pill. We want instant gratification. But AA says do these twelve steps, and we're like, fuck that. I'm not going through twelve steps. That sounds like work, and it is. It's a little bit of work, but it's the best work you'll ever do. The only thing we have to fix is our addiction. We, we, the only, our only job is to get sober. After that, everything comes naturally. I'm telling you this from experience. I'm trying to get together old videos and old footage of myself when I was drunk and high and all that um, to illustrate how bad I was. And I was bad. I almost died. And I, I have mug shots. I was bad. But I know sobriety fixes everything. I'm, I'm telling you. Mike Tucker says you can be addicted to chaos. I was I was just saying this yesterday to a friend of mine. I yearn for the times when I had nothing to lose. Right now I'm having, you know, money problems and other kinds of things. When I was homeless and at the bottom of the social barrel, drunk, and I had nothing to lose, that was chaotic. And sometimes my addict brain craves that. Janis Joplin. You know, Another famous alcoholic said, freedom is just another word for nothing left to lose. That was what I experienced when I would drink chaotically. Nothing left to lose and I felt free. The only problem with that, and it's a significant problem, is that I will die. Uh, horrible. Jaundice, colostomy bag, no friends or family, probably in a prison cell, paralyzed, 
a horrible, horrible death. And I wasn't willing to do that. And it became, it became more and more apparent and obvious to me that that is what's going to happen. Every time I drank, I would either drive drunk or get in a fight or, you know, harass somebody, drunk texts, you know, just be a, a monster. Jekyll and Hyde, that, that novel, novella, was written by a drug addict and alcoholic. The author of Jekyll and Hyde was written by a drug addict and alcoholic. <clears throat> so there, y'all like my little Valentine's uh, flower? My Valentine gave me a, a Valentine flower. <clears throat> there, were, there were Valentine's days when I was drinking and I remember falling down drunk on my, uh, on my mother's front concrete steps, just trashed, thinking, uh, you know, pitying myself and like, uh, pour me, pour me, pour me another drink. That's what I was doing. Many of a Valentine's Day in the past because I was a hopeless romantic. Now that I'm sober, my love life is kind of like my golf game. Sometimes it ain't pretty, but it'll get to the hole eventually.